Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. Today we're going to talk about ice fishing so far this year and give some late season reminders. Greg, how popular is ice fishing in North Dakota? Oh, it can be quite popular on a, on a given winter when we have open winters and we have good fish populations across the state, upwards of about one-fourth or 25 percent of the entire annual fishing effort is ice fishing. So, you know, given how much fishing goes on in the summer, it's, it's a, it, it can be a, a, a good percentage. However, when the access is poor in those winters, when we have 100 inch uh, snow, you know, winters and stuff, it can be as low as 5%. But yeah, it, it's popular and I think it's still growing in popularity. How has ice fishing changed over the years, Greg? Boy, it's changed just like so many other things, you know, that we deal. It's not just summer fishing, open water fishing. Ice fishing has changed tremendously from, you know, a hand auger to all the different type of augers and all the power augers you got out there. It's just, the technology is remarkable. Access is a lot easier with track vehicles and, you know, it, it, a lot of things out there. Um, in the scheme of things, uh, you know, a lot of these, these gadgets that are used are expensive too, so we just completed, or NDSU <coughs> just completed a, an expenditure study done for the department looking at hunting and fishing uh, economic uh, development dollars and ice fishing accounts uh, last year was like $83 million in direct expenditures, that means the anglers themselves the resident anglers spent $83 million just on bait and travel and, and, their, and all that technology that they do have. Well, let's move into ice fishing this year. How has the access been so far? Well, access was, you know, the first third of the winter, we had finally had a kind of a normal winter. We had good access. We had, we didn't have a lot of snow and we also had a growing uh, or ice pack. Uh, we had the normal walk on ice conditions and people hit, hit the lakes pretty decent. And then it, the ice still grew and before the holidays and that's critical too. So right during the holiday season, there got to be a, enough ice in, in most of the state. Of course, in the Southwest, it, oftentimes there's never enough ice to drive on, but for most of the state, drive on ice was good. So access was good. That's changed now in late January. It's uh, becoming between cold and, and then it was, there's getting to be enough snow in some areas and a lot of wind, so it's starting to drift shut. But access, it, it's been sort of an average winter so far. Okay, how's fishing been? And fishing, fishing was actually pretty decent early ice. Uh, perch, walleye, and pike, and those are the three species people are really are after for the most part in the state. We had a lot of good reports on all three species and, and kind of across the state too, which, was, which is neat. Um, but again, in the last two, three weeks, the you know, middle and latter part of January, man, people just, because of the cold, because of the wind, the snow, people aren't getting out there, we're not getting reports. So, you know, in, in the scheme of things, it's so far really been a pretty normal winter. That's what you expect in January and early February. A lot of your fisheries biologists are, or soon will be, doing dissolved oxygen testing. What can we expect this year? Yeah, they get out there and, and assess lakes. They look at a couple different water quality parameters, but oxygen, like you said, is, is the most important. And hey, we do have some concerns, uh, only because of the, you know, we've lost water every year. We've, we've been losing a couple feet of water on our, our prairie lakes. So we're a little bit concerned that we're gonna start seeing winter kill conditions. We have not had anything yet, but uh, you know, no reports of dead fish, but uh, especially if we get a lot more snow on the ice, we could, start having problems. So springtime we'll have a fresh report and we'll know where we're sitting as far as winter kill. Do they do air, every lake? No, they don't do every lake. They hit the, the, the you know, our priority lakes, the ones that are more popular. Uh, or we'll go and check out lakes that we had. If we get a report from anglers about dead minnows showing coming up through the hole or something like that, we'll, we'll hit those. But I, I bet you we hit probably two thirds of the lakes across the state. Greg, in December, I talked to all your fisheries biologists from around the state and they were saying that the lakes are holding their own, but they need moisture. Yep, and so far this winter, you know, we're probably average at best for snowpack, depending on where in the state again. We, um, but as always, we could use some snow, especially later in the year. So we don't have the winter kill now, but the later the snow comes, the better it is for the condition of that lake, but then we have that spring runoff. Uh, but if you look at 
satellite photos, whatever. Our North Dakota, we don't have a lot of snow, but things can change. That's a good thing there. And then likewise, you know, the Missouri River system, which has been normal to way above normal. Last year was, I think, number four all time for runoff in the Missouri River system. It's virtually to or to totally dependent on the mountain snowpack. And that's running below average also. It's not as bad as some years, but it's at this point, we're going to see lower lake levels in the uh, Sakakui and Oahe and uh, Devil's Lake. There is a lot of snow in, the, in, in that drainage either, so we may still continue to see a decline in the, that lake. And those are our three big fisheries in the state. Any reminders that anglers should be aware of before going out with ice fishing? Well, you know, there's a couple things out there. In the last couple of years as a department, we've been stressing with the public. Some of them, really, some of them aren't really that new. One is, you know, clean up after yourself. Litter. I mean, you know, we've been trying to get that message out there. It's, it's, it's you're breaking the law, but to clean up after yourself and don't leave that mess out there. I don't know if we're making a lot of inroads. For the most part, most people are, are, are perfect. They do what needs to be done, but there's always a few that can kind of ruin it. So please clean up your mess. Another thing is bait. And, uh, and that nothing's changed there either, but we continue to have some people, especially from out of state sources, using illegal bait. And again, the best thing, the only thing to do, and most people do this, is buy your bait locally. Fathead minnows are the real popular, that and wax worms in the winter. Buy them locally and things are good. So use a legal bait. And then the other thing that we, is kind of new that we've been pushing out there is that barrel trauma or catching fish in deep water. We kind of pressed upon people this past summer about say the same issue, and it doesn't matter, winter or summer, fish are caught in depths 30 feet and deeper. They have real problems uh, with their equilibrium and, and swim bladder and so forth. So all we tell the public for those, and there, there aren't a lot of lakes in North Dakota, but there's a couple that people ice fish in depths of 30 feet and deeper. That If you're going to do that, that's fine, but practice keeping what you catch. Uh, releasing those fish, there's a high a high percentage there's going to be some mortality there. So uh, that, that's a relative, a lot of people didn't know that. So we're just getting that message out the last couple of years. Even though we still have a ways before the end of ice fishing season, uh, give us some late season reminders. Well, yeah, we got, we got a little ways to go, but you get into March and, and it'll be here sooner than we, well, I think probably everybody right now looking forward to March actually, but uh, March 15th is kind of a deadline for for a couple things, a couple of reminders. Dark call spear fishing, fishing season ends in. <coughs> and the other thing is ice houses. And there, you know, there could be a fair number of ice houses out there March 15th. You still can use a permanent ice house, but you got to remove it daily. You can't leave it on the lake. So uh, those are probably the two big things. And a couple of weeks later, of course, April 1st, that's a new fishing season. So You can still dark call spear fish till March 15th. Right. You, you need to register if you have Oh, yeah, absolutely. You need to register. You know, that's been in place for probably 15 years or something, and it's free. You just come online and, and, and register dark house spear fishing. And that's been a growing sport also. We've noticed here, actually, last winter, it was a record number of both participants and, and northern pike harvests. So. A lot of good information, Greg. Thank you. You bet. If you're a North Dakota resident and you plan on applying for a spring turkey license, go to the Game of Fish website at gf.nd.gov. Applications can also be submitted by calling 800-406-6409. Paper applications are not available. The deadline for applying is Wednesday, February 13th. For Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at the Game of Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.